Okay, so in this video I'm going to be going through the difference between SN1 and SN2. So what is SN1 and SN2? So it's nucleophilic substitution and there's two different mechanisms. So there's the first or the second mechanism. So first of all, I'll go through SN1. So this is our SN1 mechanism. So SN1 mechanism is preferred by carbons that are tertiary carbon. Okay, so there's three different R groups or carbon groups that are attached to it. There needs to be a good leaving group. Okay, so the leaving group is a very good leaving group and it up and leaves. So how this happens, it depends on the compound. So this video, I'll just talk about a general kind of mechanism for it. So if this group leaves, so remember with your arrows, by me drawing in this, it's saying that these two electrons involved in this bond have moved onto this X. So we've produced an X minus, so those two electrons give it a negative charge because it has an extra, extra pair of electrons. And then therefore this will be a carbon that's electron deficient, so we'll pick up a positive charge. Okay, so we get a carbocation intermediate. So remember the carbocation stability is the driving force of this reaction. So tertiary carbocations are the most stable, secondary, primary are the least stable. So if you forget what they are, we've got our tertiary carbocations where we have three R groups attached and that's more stable than if we had a secondary carbocation. So now we've swapped one of our R groups for a hydrogen and that is more stable than our primary. So now we've only got one R group. So the reason that the tertiary is the most stable is because the carbons are a lot bigger than hydrogens. So they have extra orbitals available to help stabilize that positive charge. So that positive charge is shared mostly on the center one, but these outer ones have an influence in helping that carbon hold that positive charge. So the less R groups or carbons that you have helping that central carbon, the less stable it is. So the driving force of this reaction is producing this carbocation intermediate and it needs to be stable. So this sort of reaction will only occur if there is a tertiary carbocation intermediate. So once you have this um, carbocation intermediate being formed, you then have your nucleophile that's in solution. Okay, and your nucleophile usually has a lone pair of electrons sitting on it. So I'll do a little smiley face and then we have our electrons moving into the positive so the carbocation and you'll make your product. Okay, so depending on what nucleophile and what leaving group you have would depend on what things you would put in place of the X and the NU. Okay, so what you can see here is that we have a carbocation being formed. If this is a chiral compound at the beginning, then at the end, say this is an R, at the end, we'll get a 50-50 mixture of R and S. So we have this carbocation being produced. The nucleophile can come in from the front or the back, okay? So we will get a 50-50 mixture of R and S for our product, okay?